Good evening, people watching. I'm at 65, Lisa Boyce. I'm going to give you the Gospels in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ spilled his blood for our past, present, and future sins, was buried, and rose again on the third day, according to Scripture. We're saved by grace through faith in Christ alone, not of ourselves, not of works. Least any man should boast. I'm going to say something. The number one thing that Satan is doing right now, and I see this in a lot of people, He's making you doubt your salvation. And he's putting fear in you. Fear to me is an acronym. I use an acronym with fear. It's false evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. The number one thing that the enemy is doing right now, especially to the church, is making people doubt their salvation and making you feel like you have to do something about it. In other words, he wants to put you back in works. God already took care of it when he sent Jesus to die on the cross, buried and rose again on the third day, according to scripture. Grace is something we didn't earn and grace is something we don't deserve. We have, we have grace through faith, belief in Christ alone, not of ourselves, not of works. It is grace that God gave his only begotten son that whosoever, here's the key word, believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. The biggest thing that I'm looking at, and I'm seeing the comments and I'm seeing the emails, the biggest thing that I see in people, they're having a hard time believing. You got to get this straight and you got to get it straight now. Because like I said, the biggest thing Satan wants you to do is doubt your salvation. That's saying he's telling you, you have to do something. This is what the churches, the buildings have been telling people for years. And that's why millions of them are in hell right now. I had to come out and say that. Once you come to the end of yourself and admit you're a sinner in need of a savior, and it's only one, and you put your faith your belief and, tr and trust in Christ and accept him as Savior, the Holy Spirit will immediately indwell in you and seal you into the day of redemption. You will not lose your salvation. Period. The Holy Spirit is your best friend. He will lead you, guide you, and he will change you. Again, you will not lose your salvation. I can't emphasize that enough. I'm going to give you this article. Now, this is off of Hal Turner, and this is, this is extremely serious. Um, it says, and I got two articles here. I, it says here that um, Russia sends amphibious assault ships into uh, Baltic Sea towards Sweden, and the ships are loaded. Now, this just came out, and I'm getting a lot of people sending me this. Just three days after Sweden, let it be known that they're thinking of asking to join NATO. Russia has sent an amphibious assault fleet into the Baltic Sea near Sweden. And get this, the ships are loaded with land craft armor and troops. Russia's, and I got another article too that just came in. Russia's northern fleet amphibious group in the Baltic consists of... Um, uh, Repulchous class uh, vessels and another class vessel. I can't pronounce. So I got this article here and there are photos taken. Photos taken this morning off the coast of Sweden show one of the ships there. Local reports say the ships look like they're fully loaded. Other local reports say that one of the ships is at least partly loaded. Um, Russian President Vladimir Putin said recently any other nations that move to join NATO will be dealt with immediately. He just said this today to protect Russia's security. This is, this is serious. After Putin's remark, NATO chief John Stoltenberg laughingly made the uh, remark, hey, guess what? The decision to admit Ukraine into NATO has already been made. 
And if Sweden wants to join, well, they can be, that can be done very quickly. Now there's a large number of amphibious landing ships near Sweden at a time where 100,000 plus troops are massed on the Ukraine border. And Russia's leadership has declared his patience has finally run out. In response to the loaded amphibious landing ships off, the, off their coast, Sweden has made an emergency deployment of troops. Military troops are driving on the E-4 north of Stockholm. And so they got pictures here too of this. Um, some troops have been airlifted to the Gotland Island where locals are stunned to see armored vehicles and armed soldiers patrolling the streets. Um, there's all kinds of stuff here. I'm going to link this to the in the description box. And I got this also. Um, this just came out. U.S. accuses Russia of orchestrating a false flag operation. So it's saying right here, Russia, re, Russia's report plot to justify a Ukraine invasion has sparked World War III fears. As an expert warns, escalating tensions may trigger a major conflict. According to uh, The Sun, concerns are mounting after a U.S. official reportedly revealed how intelligence suggests Russia has pre-positioned a group of operatives to conduct a false flag operation in eastern Ukraine in an attempt to create a, uh, a reason to invade um, Taras Kuzio, an associate research fellow at Henry Jackson Society, told The Sun that a major war may erupt and said the crisis is likely to escalate before it de-escalates. CNN reported that the allegation echoed a statement released by Ukraine's Ministry of Defense on Friday, which said that Russian special services are preparing provocations against Russian forces in an attempt to frame Ukraine. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan hinted at the intelligence during a briefing with reporters yesterday. Now, here's where we are right now, and I'm going to link this in the description box. As it stands, Ukraine soldiers, they have 255,000 soldiers. Russia has a million. As far as tanks, Ukraine has 2,430 tanks. Russia has 13,000. Aircraft, Ukraine has 285. Russia has 4,144. Warships, Ukraine has 25. Russia has 603 warships. Nukes, Ukraine has zero. Nukes, Russia has 6,400. Our intelligence community have developed information which has now been downgraded that Russia is laying the groundwork to have operation of fabrication, the pretext for an invasion, Sullivan said yesterday. We saw this playbook in 2014. They're preparing this playbook again. The Ukrainian Defense Ministry said in a statement on Friday that the military units of the aggressor country and its satellites received orders to prepare for such provocations. For years, U.S. officials had tiptoed around the question of how much military support to provide to Ukraine for fear of provoking Russia. Now, in what would be a major turnaround, the Sleepy Joe administration officials are warning that the United States could throw its weight behind the Ukrainian insurgency should Putin of Russia invade Ukraine. How the United States, which just exited two decades of war in Afghanistan, might pivot the, uh, to funding and supporting an insurgency from fighting one is still being worked out. But even a conversation about how far the United States would go to subvert Russian our, uh, aims in the event of an invasion has revived the specter of, new, of a new Cold War and suddenly made the real prospect of the beginnings of a so-called great power conflict. This is 
serious. This, they're going to invade any time now. So this is going to be interesting how this plays out. This is why the gospel is... There is nothing else more important right now than accepting Christ. I'm going to link both of these in the description box. Get saved. That's all I got to say is get saved. For real. And stop tiptoeing around Satan and letting him bombard your mind. And let the Holy Spirit lead you. I'll be back with the next video. Thank you.